We're just gonna shine a few lights in your eyeballs. <laughs> Moms hate this and dads think it's junk. What? Per your suggestions, today we are reacting to the medical scenes that happen on Brew Stew. I've never seen this animated show before, so there's no telling what kind of medical absurdity this channel is cooking up. Let's dive right in. Hey, oh, no, you know, know skin cancer runs in our family, right? You need to go get yourself checked out and make sure you don't have melanoma or some so there I am in the reception area for this dermatologist. Uh, hi. You have a family history of skin cancer. It is good to get checked out to see a dermatologist. If you are at increased risk for whatever reason, make sure that you cover yourself with sunscreen or sunblock, and then also wear protective clothing. Make sure that you're safe as well. But trust me, I'm the sunscreen. I'm here to see if I'm dying or not. Before we tell you that, you need to fill out all this paperwork. Mella. I know, I, mean, I tried to Google it, but even Google is like, uh, did you mean mahogany? <laughs> a lot of medical words are really, really hard. They all have roots in all different languages. When I went to medical school, we were taught that a disease was one name and now it's changing to something different. So it's always evolving. Finally, they call me in the doctor's office. There's a bottle of lube on top of it. What the hell does a dermatologist need a bottle of lube for? What brings you in today? Uh, my dad said I need to see if I have melanoma or some I remember when I was a medical student and I did a rotation for a month at a dermatologist's office. You have to look at people naked all day long. It's to try to catch something before it gets bad. So it makes sense. It's just a little awkward. Why don't you go ahead and take your shirt off for me? So per the doctor's request, I take my shirt off so he can oogle me. And at this point, the atmosphere in the room has taken a very unfortunate sexual turn. Oh my gosh, this is the mind of a patient. It's kind of funny. There's no gown. What's this person in a gown? Probably cold in the office. Hey, how long have you had this mole here on your back? Uh, what are you talking about? Here, give me your phone. I'll take a picture of it. Now I really look like an idiot. Boy, you were way off. You put an H in there. <laughs> it's so important. You know how many times to tell patients to take photos so you can actually tell if something's getting better or worse? And it's good to be able to follow your own moles. I have a mole? Here, you see that? I mean, it's probably nothing, but we should probably have that mole removed. At least they're talking on the same level. We don't curse in front of patients. We get patients that yell at us and curse at us, but we don't reciprocate that. I just numb the area and I cut it out. So now there I am. No shirt on. <laughs> you numb up the area, a couple injections, and then use a specific type of knife. It's not this huge meat cutter that the doctor has. All right, we're gonna send a skin sample to the lab and get it analyzed. If it's bad news, we'll give you a call. And if it's good news, well, we don't really give a so we're not gonna call you at all. Same thing happens. We'll call you if it's positive. We won't call you if it's negative. You send it off to the lab, a pathologist takes a look at it and see that there's any abnormalities of the cells. Hey, it's me, your doctor. Bad news, you got butthole cancer. You need to come down here so I can shove a camera up your A camera up my Oh, God damn it! that's what the lube was for. Oh my gosh. Cancer from melanoma, no. And then why would a dermatologist be doing a colonoscopy? And lo and behold, a miracle does happen. Everything goes black. I fall over like a sack of potatoes and I start foaming at the mouth like a wild animal. I'm having what some people would call a seizure. People actually come into the emergency department for whatever reason, where they're actually fake seizures. It's really, really hard to mimic a true seizure. If you need help, just ask for it. Don't try to do the fake seizures. And I didn't even get to have one of the fun seizures. You know, where you're flopping around like a fish? No, I just laid there, half dead, eyes wide open. What a rip off. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of different types of seizures. You can have an absence seizure. You're just, nothing's happening, which is what he is probably describing. Now, I don't remember any of this because uh, my brain doesn't work anymore, apparently. <laughs> If the brain is working, it's just misfiring a little bit. Paramedics bust through the door. Ah, uh, you know I can walk, right? I have legs that work. Yeah, but you don't have a brain that works, apparently. <laughs> it's really funny. Sometimes you can actually have some paralysis after seizures, which will eventually go away, but it does happen. So we're at the hospital trying to figure out why my brain suddenly turned into a bowl of mashed potatoes. <laughs> X-rays of the head are pretty much useless in a seizure unless you're really worried about a skull fracture, but typically you wouldn't get an X-ray, you'd get a CT scan of the head to make sure that there's no hemorrhage inside of the skull. I know exactly what happened. The thought of me losing to Steven's stupid little brother was so abstract to my brain that it tried to explode itself. <laughs> the only time your brain can really explode is penetrating trauma to the head, bullets, explosions. I have to have an MRI done where they slide you into this big tube so they can take pictures of your broken brain. Oh, good job. That is a good picture of what an MRI cross section looks like. Nobody likes to be in it. The MRI is a long tube and it makes a lot of noise and you have to be in there for a long period of time and you can't move. EEG test. There you go. Okay, good, good. 
good. EEG test, basically it's looking at brain waves to see if there's any abnormalities. They glue a bunch of electrodes to your head and they sit you in front of a strobe light. I remember thinking a strobe light, oh my God, they're trying to make me have a seizure now. What a bunch of <laughs> holes. They don't glue them to your head. It's a cap that they put on your head. I've never seen any strobe lights when they've actually done this to admitted patients. Okay, just sit back and relax. We're just gonna shine a few lights in your eyeballs. <laughs> Most of the time, people get seizures from either not taking their seizure medications, stress, lack of sleep, alcohol, different things that would actually just stress the body. Oh man, I thought you'd be <laughs> flopping all over the floor by now. Well, I guess we could hit you in the head with this frying pan and see what happens. <laughs> If you find that you have somebody having a seizure, grab a shirt, a sweatshirt, a pillow, something, put it under their head, lay them on their side. Don't try to stop their shaking. Make sure you call 911. My doctor concludes that uh, he doesn't really know why I had a seizure. Sometimes your brain's just stupid, I guess. I don't know. What do I look like, a doctor? That is probably the more common answer. Our job in the emergency department is to rule out major life-threatening causes for a seizure and to help prevent one from happening again or get you to a neurologist. Our kid keeps running into walls he just can't see anything why doesn't he have glasses yet and i was like shut your mouth old man i don't want any of these goddamn glasses <laughs> <laughs> the optometrist is the eye doctor for glasses and simple things. The ophthalmologist is the eye surgeon. When they test our vision in school, I would just wait and have a bunch of kids go ahead of me and just memorize what they would say when they'd read off the chart. Oh, that's pretty good. There's a specific distance that you need to be away depending on the size of the chart. And then if you actually can't read, sometimes they actually have the availability to do different shapes. E Z Y X W V U T. Boom. You can all suck it. I can see just fine. <laughs> Ah, uh, the chart's over there. <laughs> the letters are actually standardized, so you know you could memorize it, but they'll make you say it backwards or skip around. So I go to the eye doctor, and if you've never been to the eye doctor before, then you don't know what hell on earth is. So yeah, optometrists, they actually go to very specific optometry school. They don't actually go to medical school. One of the first tests they put you through is for glaucoma. Glaucoma, which is increased eye pressure. So it actually can hasten your eyesight loss. Put your chin up on this machine here, and we're going to shoot a little puff of air into your oh, eye. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, it's a little puff of air. In the emergency department, we have something called a tono pen. We numb up the eye and we just gently touch it. We can get pressures of the eye that way. Now, you usually donate blood for one of two reasons. Either A, you do it for a good cause, you know, like you're supposed to, or B, you're sick of the Red Cross calling you every second of every goddamn day, harassing you like some psycho ex-girlfriend. <laughs> there's always shortage of blood. I'm AB positive. If I donate blood, the only people that can actually use my blood is somebody who is AB positive, but I'm also the universal acceptor. I can get blood from anybody. I can get from O's, A's, and B's. And the first thing they do is have a lady test your blood. See how much hepatitis you got going on in your body. <laughs> yes, you definitely are screening it for all the major viruses and blood disorders. I look over and see this girl next to me getting her blood oh, drawn. God, She's probably. not looking so good. She's laying down white as a ghost, looking like like E.T. when he was about to die. We get a lot of times where people get blood and they pass out. I always tell them this is the perfect place to pass out. This is where you want to be. We'll take care of you. Now remember, your next appointment's in 54 days and 12 hours. You better be there or we're going to come to your house and slash your tire. Oh my gosh. No, you don't have to go that often. But if you can, donate when you can. This was actually really good. The topics that they bring up are really good or relevant. Let me know if you guys like this show, if I can should continue to react to this and do some other episodes. Check out this series right here. Make sure that you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, hit those like buttons. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.